Boxers guarding models, former child stars guiding the next generation, directors setting young actors up on dates. Having a famous parent is one thing. Having celebrity godparents is a different experience entirely. Jake Gyllenhaal's parents also work in showbiz. His father, Stephen Gyllenhaal, launched a successful career as a TV director in the 80s. And his mom, Naomi Foner, is a screenwriter whose screenplay for the movie Running on Empty earned her an Oscar nomination in 1989. So naturally, they've made a few famous friends over the years. One of those pals is Halloween star Jamie Lee Curtis, who is Jake and his sister Maggie's godmother. Curtis adorably plugged Jake's film The Guilty when she appeared on The Rachel Ray Show in 2021, and she couldn't resist bragging about her talented godson and his performance in the film. Jake returned the love when he appeared on The Jess Cagle Show, revealing that he actually crashed Curtis's guest house during lockdown. She is just one of the most generous, loving, giving people... For Curtis, there was a huge perk of inviting Jake to become her neighbor. She became the beneficiary of his sourdough obsession during the pandemic's early days. Reportedly, Jake dropped fresh bread at Curtis's window on a daily basis. By deciding to become an actor, Angelina Jolie was following in the footsteps of her father, John Voight, and her mother, Marceline Bertrand, who sadly died from ovarian cancer in 2007. Jolie also gained a famous godmother when her parents befriended British icon Jacqueline Bissett while Voight was filming the 1975 movie End of the Game. Reportedly, Bissett and Bertrand formed a close bond. Unfortunately, a casting shakeup prevented Jolie and her godmother from acting alongside each other in the 2005 action comedy Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Bissett revealed to people in 2021 that she and another English actor, Terence Stamp, filmed scenes for the movie, but they got scrapped. As Bissett explained, they recast it with apparently two other actors. They said we were too British. According to E.T., Jolie doesn't see her godmother often. However, when Jolie visited Paris for a Guerlain fragrance event in 2019, she reconnected with her godmother. Jolie previously told Marie Claire that she agreed to become the face of Guerlain because her mother used the French cosmetic brand's products, and who better to reminisce about Bertrand with than Bissett? When Billy Ray Cyrus's country music career was taking off, he became good friends with legendary entertainer Dolly Parton. The singers, who recorded a song titled Romeo together in 1993, even sparked romance rumors at one point. While interviewing Billy Ray and his magnificent mullet for the Today Show in the 90s, Parton gave a humorous response to the rumors, saying, I wish it was true, and you never get too old to dream, but good lord, I got wigs older than that boy. While Billy Ray never made that dream come true, he did ask Parton to be his daughter Miley Cyrus's godparent. I said, I don't know if I'll be around to where I can actually do all the duties that a godmother does. Let me be her fairy godmother. <laughs> Having formed a close relationship with Miley, Parton gave the Hannah Montana star her blessing to play her in a biopic someday. While Miley told E! News she'd be more than happy to play the role, Parton has joked that Miley would need to make some changes to accurately portray her. The country star told Insider, she'd have to put on some weight and get some bigger boobs. In a 2020 interview with Esquire, Home Alone star Macaulay Culkin opened up about a topic he rarely speaks about, his friendship with Michael Jackson. In defending the late pop star against allegations that he sexually abused children, Culkin said that he never witnessed Michael do anything inappropriate when he spent time around him as a child. Culkin also revealed that Michael asked him to be the godfather of his daughter, Paris Jackson. Paris and Culkin became close friends and even got identical tattoos of spoons, a reference to Culkin's custom of pilfering the cutlery from establishments he dines at. The ink also serves as a reminder of some wisdom Culkin once shared with Paris, which was, don't forget to be silly, don't forget to take something away from this whole experience, and don't forget to stick something up your sleeve. According to Paris, Culkin also offered her some helpful acting advice. She had a few screen credits to her name when she auditioned for a role in the 2021 anthology series American Horror Stories, but Culkin's input was invaluable because he'd previously appeared in its parent series American Horror Story. Paris told E! News, he said overdo it at certain points, kind of like over act and kind of make it theatrical. After she landed the part, she later celebrated by sending her godfather a selfie of her blood-soaked face. Shortly after, she got a bloody hair pick from Culkin in return. Drew Barrymore doesn't just share a professional connection with Steven Spielberg, who directed her in the 1982 movie E.T. as a child. Apparently, after Spielberg became the actor's godparent, he decided that matchmaking is part of the role. He once helped Barrymore meet her childhood crush, Stand By Me star Corey Feldman. In a January 2023 appearance on The Drew Barrymore Show, Feldman reminisced about Spielberg's office contacting him to set up the date. And the little girl from E.T. wants to meet you because she's got a crush on you. Barrymore affirmed this story. According to Feldman, they went to the movies together, and when they got a bit older, they actually ended up dating. 
Spielberg previously appeared on The Drew Barrymore Show in 2021 and reflected back on another memorable moment in Barrymore's life, when she posed for Playboy in 1995. The filmmaker reacted to her pictorial by sending her a quilt emblazoned with the words, Cover Up. Spielberg revealed that he received some apologetic photos in return. Barrymore was dressed like a nun, and in one shot, she was pictured kneeling beside a statue of the Virgin Mary. Vanderpump Rules villain James Kennedy is the godson of pop royalty George Michael. However, Michael was only a father figure to Kennedy until the future reality show star was a tween. According to The Sun, Michael and Kennedy's father were cousins who were once the best of friends. However, Michael's 1998 arrest for lewd conduct reportedly fractured their friendship. Kennedy said of The Last Christmas Singer, "...he was like a second dad. He was family. He wasn't George Michael to me, it was family." In a 2017 appearance on Watch What Happens Live, Kennedy said that Michael's death on Christmas Christmas Day in 2016 hit him and his dad really hard. Kennedy had been planning to visit the singer sometime after the holidays, and he was very broken up that he'd never have the chance. According to Kennedy, reports that he'd received an inheritance from Michael were just rumors, but the Wham! legend left him an even greater legacy, his music. Kennedy launched a music career of his own as a DJ and producer, and in 2021, he told The Things that he was toying with the idea of remixing some of Michael's music. However, these plans remain up in the air as he wants to honor Michael's legacy to the best of his ability. On the sitcom Happy Days, Bryce Dallas Howard's dad, Ron Howard, served up nostalgia at a greasy spoon with a little help from Henry Winkler's shark-jumping greaser character, Arthur Fonzie Fonzarelli. Off-screen, the denizens of Arnold's drive-in became such good friends that Ron made a big ask of his co-star, Winkler told Variety. Early on, he said to us, God forbid if anything happens to us, would you take all of our children? You can even bar mitzvah them. The Barry star took his role as a godfather seriously. In a 2011 appearance on Piers Morgan Tonight, Bryce said that Winkler had recently wished her well ahead of the premiere of The Help. She went on to reveal that Winkler is extremely supportive, almost more so than her own parents. Howard told Parade that Winkler was even there when her son was born. In short, having the Fonz as a godfather is just… Perfect the moon. <laughs> On The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, actor Marissa Tomei revealed that she became friends with Lisa Bonet before they began appearing together on A Different World in the late 80s. When Bonet and rocker Lenny Kravitz became parents in 1988, Bonet asked her co-star Confidant to be the godmother of their daughter Zoe Kravitz, whom Tomei affectionately refers to as Zozo. Three decades later, Tomei interviewed her goddaughter for In Style. By then, Zoe was a star in her own right, and her acting credits have included the likes of Big Little Lies and The Batman. Tomei's pride in Zoe accomplishments was evident. She told her goddaughter, "...to see you cultivate your own style and watch you move through the world as you grow up, you just keep grabbing more of who you are, stepping into yourself." Tomei said that she gained a new friend when Zoe reached adulthood, with the two women discussing topics including their work, similar taste in body art, and favorite beauty rituals. Speaking of beauty, Refinery29 reports that when Zoe collaborated with YSL Beauté on a lipstick line in 2019, she paid homage to her godmother by giving one of the shades a name inspired by Tomei, Maris's Nude. Kravitz told Tomei she did this in honor of all the support her godmother has shown throughout her life. Khloe Kardashian's family had a number of stars in their orbit long before they landed their e-reality series. In 2014, Khloe shared a throwback picture on Instagram of her late father, Robert Kardashian, posing with her step-parent Caitlyn Jenner and her boxing champ godfather, Sugar Ray Leonard. After some of Khloe's followers mistook Leonard for Robert Kardashian's former client, O.J. Simpson, she set them straight on Twitter with a profane message clarifying that it was Leonard in the photo, not Simpson. During a 2017 Conversations with Maria Menounos interview, Leonard admitted that he didn't have a close-knit relationship with Chloe, but would always be there to offer her his support. When host Maria Menounos asked him if Chloe had ever reached out to him for help, he said that she had not, which he said was a testament to her strength. Kris Jenner is a good friend of former talk show host Kathy Lee Gifford, who is the godmother to Kris and Caitlyn Jenner's daughters, Kendall and Kylie. In her memoir, Kris Jenner and All Things Kardashian, Kris recalled that Kathy Lee actually helped her decide on Kendall's name. Years after she played such a significant role in her goddaughter's life, Gifford seemingly threw some shade at Kendall and Kylie's behavior when she appeared on Watch What Happens Live. In the 2020 interview, Gifford admitted that she wasn't close with the girls, having moved away from them while they were still very young. She did have some godmother the advice, though. I would tell them, you know, first of all, stay close to God, and, and, and they sometimes do. 
Gifford might even be partially responsible for the rise of the Kardashian-Jenner dynasty. In her memoir, It's Never Too Late, she shared that her agent kept urging her to do a reality series, which she had no interest in. Gifford suggested that the Jenners would be a better fit for the format. While her agent wasn't a fan of this idea, she decided to ask another client if he would be open to inviting cameras into his life, future Keeping Up With The Kardashians producer Ryan Seacrest. If aspiring chef Brooklyn Beckham ever needs help in the kitchen, he could always consult his godfather's 1997 special An Audience with Elton John. During the show, Elton John accepted a challenge to create a catchy song based on an oven manual. Apparently, John has a strong relationship with the Cookin' with Brooklyn host and his brother. He recalled one particularly cute memory with the Beckham boys on The Graham Norton Show, recounting how he drove them to the Kung Fu Panda premiere when they were boys and, at their request, sang them a song from The Lion King to keep them entertained. While John's status as Brooklyn and Romeo's godfather has allowed David and Victoria Beckham's children to experience priceless moments like that car concert, some of David's relatives were reportedly peeved about the couple's godparent pics, who also included actor Elizabeth Hurley. As one source sniffed to the Daily Mail, you have to ask yourself why it is that Liz Hurley and Elton John have been asked to be godparents when David's own flesh and blood have been excluded. It seems the trend continued with Brooklyn's other siblings as well, as Cruz and Harper Beckham's godparents include celebs like actor Eva Longoria and singer Mark Anthony. When Dynasty legend Joan Collins was asked to be Cara Delevingne's godparent, the honor was slightly diminished by the fact that Collins shared the title with 16 other people, including author Sir Nicholas Coleridge. Collins is good friends with Cara's parents, property magnate Charles Delevingne, and his wife Pandora Stevens, a socialite whose mother was one of Princess Margaret's ladies-in-waiting. In a 2015 appearance on Watch What Happens Live, Collins said that she asked the couple why Cara had over a dozen other godparents. Their response was quite utilitarian. In case any of them die. Collins became an active participant in Cara's life, and the model turned to the seasoned star for advice when she decided to pursue her own acting career. However, Collins didn't immediately spill her secrets for executing a flawless slapping scene. Instead, she quoted Jack Nicholson's classic line from As Good As It Gets. Just what the world needs, another actress. Okay. Despite this admonition, a determined Delevingne told the New York Times that she dreamed of becoming an actor since she was a little girl. When she went against Collins' wishes, her godmother transitioned to the role of a supportive mentor. The Paper Town star told Time Out that Collins began giving her career advice, even advising her against attending theater school. Hugh Grant infamously got caught cheating on Elizabeth Hurley with a sex worker in 1995, and rom-com rules dictate that any relationship must be forever severed after such a serious transgression. However, against all odds, the Bridget Jones Diary actor and the bedazzled star remained a couple for years afterward. When they split in 2000, they remained the best of friends, with Hurley even asking Grant to be her son Damien's godfather. After Damien's birth in 2002, Hurley's ex Steve Bing contested her claim that he was Damien's biological father though Hurley was eventually proven right. Even though she probably could have used her good pal's support during that difficult time, Wen reported that Grant was hesitant about accepting a role as a father figure for baby Damien. He explained, There's no godfather talk emerging from that camp so far. With babies, I don't mind them for about four minutes. It's my max. However, Grant would end up having the godfather title thrust upon him and eventually welcomed five children of his own. In a 2015 interview on The Jonathan Ross Show, Hurley revealed that Grant even asked her to be the godmother of one of his kids. Although he's busy with his own big family, Grant still hangs out with his ex and his godson. In turn, Damien confirmed to The Times in 2021 that he and his godfather have an active relationship. Star Wars icon Carrie Fisher chose a universally admired godmother for her child. In 1990, Meryl Streep starred in the semi-autobiographical movie Postcards from the Edge, the screenplay for which Fisher adapted from her own novel of the same name. Two years after the movie premiered, Fisher and talent agent Brian Lord welcomed their daughter, Billy Lord, and hit the jackpot when Streep agreed to be her godmother. Decades later, Billy expressed her enthusiasm for this decision on a 2019 episode of Watch What Happens Live. Uh -oh. What's the most magical thing? about having Meryl Streep as your godmother. I mean, she's Meryl Streep! Yeah. Streep spent some time with her goddaughter in 2017 after the sad loss of her mother. The December prior, Fisher and her mother, silver screen legend Debbie Reynolds, had died just a day apart. 
and Streep was among the mourners in attendance at the memorial for the two beloved stars. According to People, Streep sang Happy Days Are Here Again, her late friend's favorite tune. Reynolds and Fisher's acting legacy lives on in Billy, who joined the Star Wars family in 2015 with her appearance in The Force Awakens. Her television credits include Scream Queens and American Horror Story. Now that she's a star in her own right, she has a career goal that we're fairly certain her late mother would support. In 2018, she shared with Vulture that she, like many others in the industry, would be delighted to work with Streep in a professional context one day down the line. The Simple Life star Nicole Richie and her younger sister, model Sophia Richie, grew up with a famous father in Hello hitmaker Lionel Richie. Through him, they also gained a global superstar as a godfather, Michael Jackson. Despite the infamous allegations that have marred Jackson's legacy, Nicole defended the late singer in a 2003 interview with Access Hollywood, saying that she and other children would occasionally have sleepovers at Jackson's Neverland Ranch compound. She recalled to Access, It was like absolutely nothing more than just an adult kind of wanting to be a kid again, just, you know, enjoying the company of children. However, it's possible Nicole's perspective may have changed. By 2006, she was refusing to comment on Jackson when The Guardian asked her about him. In a 2018 appearance on Fitzy and Whippa with Kate Ritchie, Sophia said that she also visited Neverland Ranch. She called the pop star really sweet, but clarified that she spent most of her time at Neverland with Paris Jackson, whom she considers a close friend. Lionel first met Michael when they were still members of their respective bands, the Commodores and the Jackson 5. After Michael became a parent, Lionel revealed that he and his friend became even closer. In a 2009 interview with Wales Online, Richie explained, For Michael, I am now the wise old philosopher. He'll call me and say, Lionel, how do I do this? 